Morning. Good morning. Okay, readings from Matthew 17, 24 to 27, New International Version. The Temple Tax. After Jesus and his disciples arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the two Demario Temple Tax came to Peter and asked, Doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he does, he replied. When Peter came into the house, Jesus was the first to speak. What do you think, Simon? He asked. From whom do the king of the earth collect duties and taxes? From their own children or from others? From others, Peter answered. Then the children are exempt, Jesus said to him. But so that we may not cause offense, go to the lake and throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and you will find a poor Mary form. Take it and give it to them for my tax and yours. Peter was obedient, even though his request made no sense. <coughs> Thank you, man. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank Praise be to God. God. Praise be to God indeed. We're we'll going to have Brother Willie coming up. <coughs> hey, <we're not> saying this morning is part of what we talked about last week. The title of my message last week was, Who is He and What is He to You? And as we talked about it, we, we start talking about uh, why things are like they are today. And one of the first things that came to my mind is, a lot of the trouble happened, and a lot of the trouble started happening when they took prayer out of school. Amen. And, and, that, and I stand on that, and it's, it's just, you know, when he, he's, he's said, you know, we're teaching our kids, you know, the wrong way. Well, our nation, when they voted to do that, started teaching our kids the wrong way. The name of this song is It Is No Secret. Oh 
God will take care of us. It is no secret what God can do. Amen. Is it? Amen. You know, today in this world, no one believes, very few people believe in miracles. You know, most of you guys are over 15. <coughs> and you probably never thought you were going to live as long as you live. And God has used you throughout the years, and He wants to use you more. I don't care how old you are, you can be and are a blessing to other individuals. Amen. And if you don't believe it, ask me. I'll tell you. You pay many taxes. It's a pleasure tax. When I see you all here, my heart jumps with joy. It makes me keep on keeping on. I don't care how bad the week has been. Isn't that right, Norma? That's right. I'm happy here. I'm happy here. How many people are happy where they are? How many of us could be happier if we just let the Lord take us a little further? Amen. Amen. I know I could be. You know, when the Lord comes up to me and says, Big Daddy, I want you to get out there and drop that line. Uh, what kind of spinner should I use? I love to fly fish. Lord, I could do it with a fly. I know I can get that big. He said, go out there and drop the line. You don't need bait. You use the word of God. You use the love that Jesus Christ showed when he was on this earth. You do not need to become a uh, evangelist. You know? Just be yourself. People stumble. All of us stumble. I don't care who you are or what you, what kind of religious beliefs. There's some time during the week, during the day, maybe during the hour, you might say, <clears throat> I wonder if this God could help me with this. It's not a matter I wonder if. You say, Lord, when are you going to help me with this? When are you going to help me get rid of this or that or the other? He said, drop your line. We talked about the question was so, so powerful that it's difficult to understand the financial situation. Do you think that other people we're standing around when Peter says, my master will pay the tax. How much other people thought he had? Look at this ragtag bunch of creatures walking around here. All they did was catch a few fish, and now they're trying to be preachers. That's almost as bad as a motorcycle guy trying to be a pastor. Just about that, that's about what it's like. And I'm sure people looked at him and said, well, this is going to be a joke. Right? Don't you think there's people around drive by and say, well, that church won't be here another two or three years? Don't they? I'm sure. I don't even think about that. I'm thinking two services in three years. I'd love to see this place packed twice on Sunday. Or three times. I don't care. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Wouldn't that be wonderful to see people coming to enjoy the word of the Lord? 
They just came from Palestine. We talked about that. I get too excited on these sermons. You know, America today has in God we trust on the coins, right? Do you think that any of the people who do not like God, do not like America, mind spending that money for their luxuries and so forth. Doesn't bother them a bit. But they'll say, I don't want this on my coin, right? I don't want this on the dollar bill. I don't want it there. Let me tell you, we need to get on our knees every night and pray that this type of foolishness, devil stuff, stops in America. Amen. We're almost to the point of no return. When Khrushchev said, we will destroy you from within, not from without. People thought, well, isn't he crazy? Willie, I'm, I'm going to throw a new twist on your prayer in school. If they'd never taken it out of the home, they'd been daresome to take it out of school. Amen. And I get an amen, amen. on that. Right. That's where my mother and I disagreed a lot. And uh, I just think the home is the place it starts, and if it's there, then all the teachers probably will be praying. And all the principals will be praying. And all the superintendents will be praying. But you know what? We depend too much on ourselves on ourselves to get things done. Well, I found out one thing. If I have learned nothing else in the last three or four months, I am in control of absolutely nothing. Absolutely zero. But I've learned one thing. I'm not going to miss a Sunday preaching. I'm not going to miss the time at Walmart when I get to do my walk and say, oh, pardon me, do I know you? And they say, no, I say, you should. <laughs> and I tell them about the Lord. You know, it wouldn't bother me if somebody threw me out of Walmart. I'd just go back and do it again. But you know what? I've never had a manager say a word to me. Because I even talked to them. This guy said, you know what? We've had so much shoplifting, we can't hardly stand it. I said, you know what? Those people don't love God. When you get your heart right with God, you don't want to do drugs, you don't want to do anything that would hinder you as a testimony for God. Do you? Amen. I'm sure I fail. I'm positive I fail. But it's not intentional. It's out of my old feeble body. I'm there going, there's your drop. There you go. Now you've seen one. I'll probably go to jail because I didn't put who, who took the picture, but there it is. There's one of, one of the drop you know, looks like. They had four or five, six different types. It's just cool when it was made. Here's something I have really thought about all week. When I had faith enough to drop that hook in the water and expect to catch a fish with a coin in its mouth to, act, to satisfy the temple tax. When I had that much faith, now I'm going to tell you something. It's easy to say, 
Yeah, I don't have that much faith. You're sitting on top of the hill. You're not standing by the water. And I know Brother Leonard likes to fish, don't you, Brother Leonard? And if I get up here and tell you, I'll tell you, Brother, go down here and drop your hook in the water. And the first one you pull up, you're going to have four, a coin worth four drops. You'd say, you need counseling, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> you need counseling. <laughs> I'm kidding. You wouldn't, you would think I'd lost my mind, wouldn't you? To catch a fish, you gotta have bait, right? God, Jesus did not mention bait. He said, just drop the hook. Sure enough, I love that picture I found. A guy pulling the mouth of the fish up and there's the corner. Man, that just excited me beyond repair. I thought, wow, that's something else. But you know what? God sends me and you out every day to go fishing. And you're not called to fish for fish. You're a fish for men. And that includes women. Good question. Would you have gone? Would you have gone? That's a tough question. Because he's asking us to do things every day of our lives. Have you ever been led to go somewhere or do something that you never thought in the wildest dreams God would want you to do? Man, that is good. That is great. That is wonderful. Here comes the question. When was the last time God had requested you to go fishing? And I want you to think about this. When was the last time you felt that heart throb? I need to do this. I need to tell someone about the Lord. I need to give them $10. I need to, I mean, do something. When was the last time? I want to tell you something. I look for the fishing hole every day I get out of bed. I mean, there has to be some fish out there that God wants me to catch. At least talk to them. I know fish respond up there where we're living now. I can go over to the aquarium and go like this and this fish goes <laughs> So I know they'll follow you. <laughs> and now I'm not stupid. It's the fish that's stupid. <laughs> Maybe it's me. <laughs> what was your response when God asked you to do it? You know, uh, you might, what might you find in the fish's mouth that you're about to let get away from? You know, I consider this, I am not a preacher. I want to love people to the Lord. I can't beat them in the head. It's not going to do any good. But God loves people. How many times do I let people walk right by me and I forget to go like this on the aquarium and they go mm -hmm, and tell them about Jesus Christ. 
How many times have I done it? Hmm. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you so much for what you've given us and what you've done for us. Lord, we pray that as Christians that we will not be afraid to stand for our Savior, that we will not be afraid to spread your word and be a testimony not only in word, but most of all, and more importantly, in deed, where people can see Jesus in us. If there's anyone, Lord, that needs to make a decision or rededicate their life or whatever they need to do, Lord, this is a time. Touch their hearts and speak to them. And we ask this in your holy name. Amen. If you've never accepted Christ, made a profession of faith, today's the best day to do it. Let us turn to hymn number 